As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. Remember the Game is brought to you by my website, abcomedy.net. Uh, as you may or may not know, I'm a comedian by night. And as much as I love talking about old video games, uh, telling jokes is how I actually pay my bills. So please check out my website. Uh, in addition to old episodes of this podcast, you'll find my blog, videos of my stand-up, all of my upcoming shows, and my contact information. If you need a comedian for your next fundraiser, corporate event, house party, whatever you got going on, uh, hit me up. Again, it's abcomedy.net. And if you're enjoying the podcast, please subscribe to it. Please leave us a good review. Uh, and most importantly, please tell a friend. I'd really appreciate it. There'll be a new episode every single Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope you enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game, my retro gaming podcast, where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening. This week for episode 47, it's happening. We're talking about a Simpsons game, and we're talking The Simpsons Bart's Nightmare for the Super Nintendo, and a little bit later for the Sega Genesis. Uh, I'll be honest, right before I went to rec hit record on my thing, I had my notes ready and everything, and then I had to double check because I was like, could it, it really take 47 episodes before we happen to dip into the Simpsons fucking wasteland of video games? And it was, 47. That's pretty, I'm proud of that. It's pretty good. I'm a Simpsons fanatic. I've played a ton of the games. I, I mean, we have more episodes about them in the bank. I can't believe it took this long to get to one. Uh, but here we go. Bart's Nightmare, you guys. Before we get to that, you know I need to ramble for a few minutes because otherwise, uh, what's the point of having a podcast? Uh, you guys can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash remember the game. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at member the game because somebody already had remember. So it's just like the title, but without the RE at the front. Member the game. Uh, we try to follow back everyone that follows us. And we're on the YouTube, youtube.com slash remember the game. You can find us there. Please subscribe to our channel. I'll try to subscribe back to everybody that subscribes to us. Uh, right now, all that's on there is episodes of the podcast uh every episode except one uh that got pulled off for music uh purposes are on there and ready to listen to and there's more coming as you know if you've been listening to the show at all over the last few weeks uh i'm getting ready to try to level this thing up at episode 50 i've finished recording uh my first full let's play series of an old game uh it's it's i just have to edit it and then start throwing them up and i will be doing that in a couple of weeks right around the time i launch episode 50 uh there are reviews coming as well and i have an idea for a second show that is kind of coming 
into place as well. So uh, lots coming. So don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash remember the game. And if you don't hate the show, please leave us a good review on something on iTunes or whatever. I don't know what it accomplishes. I ask for them every week though, because I've been told by all the articles I've read about starting a podcast that that's all uh, shit you have to do. So, uh, okay. Now that's out of the way. I can tell you about uh, what's going on in my life for a couple minutes and then uh, whether you like it or not, and then I'll get to Bart's nightmare. Uh, things are very, very busy between trying to get all these things ready for the podcast and my comedy uh, side of things. Uh, I'm hopping, but it's great. I love it. Uh, I have a, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a ton of episodes getting ready to, re- uh, scheduled to record here in the next few weeks, enough episodes to take me through to September uh, if nothing falls through, which is awesome. So uh, I, I say it every week to the, the guys that come on the show, to my friends, but to everyone that is a guest on the show, past, present, or future, uh, thank you. I live in kind of a pain in the ass place to get in Edmonton, um, and all my friends still make the drive up here, uh, or in some cases the bus or whatever however it is. They maybe they hitchhike. I don't fucking know, uh, but they get to my house just to record these podcasts. I can't pay them. I don't pay them. This podcast costs me money. I don't make anything off of it, but I'm really appreciative of everyone that takes the time to come up and do the show. Uh, so we have lots in the bank with a lot more coming. Uh, I did have intentions of recording episode 50 on the road last week with my pal Mark uh, while we were doing a show together in Grand Prairie, a comedy show, but uh, things kind of went off the rails at that show. We drank way too much booze and uh, we're in no condition to try to record a podcast after the show. And that should say something about how fucked up we were because this show isn't good, period. And I swear and stuff all the time. What's the worst that was going to happen? Drunk. I was fucked. So uh, that didn't happen, but we'll get it done. Episode 50 is coming. I'm excited about it. Uh, Just I won't get too drunk before I do it. That would have been a terrible mistake. Uh, That's really it. As far as what I'm playing... Uh, look at that, four minutes, and I'm already to let's, what am I playing? That's I'm killing it. Uh, as far as what I'm playing this week, uh, I'm going to be playing Resident Evil 4. It just released on the Switch, yeah, today. I, well, today is the 21st, I, so it'll be yesterday, tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Resident Evil 4 just came out on the Switch along with Resident Evil 0 and the Resident Evil 1 uh, HD remaster. Uh, they're 40 bucks Canadian each, which some people have complained about. I totally get where the complaints are coming from. Uh, I won't pay $40 for Resident Evil 0 or a remake of Resident Evil 1, but Resident Evil 4 is on my 10 favorite games of all time list, and yeah, I'll pay $40 to have that with me wherever I go. And I don't have a way to play it right now. Uh, I got rid of my Wii and everything, so I need it. Uh, So I have it downloaded, sitting there ready. I set it up to download last night uh, when I got home from the comedy show that I was at, and then I fell asleep. Well, it was recording, so or downloading, so uh, I haven't given a shot yet, but that's my plan this week, is to dip into Resident Evil 4. Expect an episode of this show on Resident Evil 4 in the future. I just need to do a little bit of a refresher first. So fucking excited to play through that game again. I don't think I've played through it since GameCube, so I'm pretty pumped. Uh, I've also fallen back down the Mario Kart 8 uh, rabbit hole hard. Uh, just finished uh, three-starring all the 200cc Grand Prix Cups. Uh, not to brag, but that's a brag. Uh, admittedly that's my third time doing it uh because i did it on the wii u when they released the dlc for it and then i did it on the switch right after i got my switch and then like a jackass i traded in mario kart 8 for something i don't even remember what maybe mario odyssey thinking i'd played enough mario kart 8 i would never play it again and like a week after i traded it in i was like this was a terrible mistake so uh, my girlfriend and i each own a switch but we only use one dock. The other dock was sitting there collecting dust. So a few months ago, I sold my second dock to somebody and then used that money to rebuy Mario Kart 8. And I did it digitally this time, so I couldn't trade it in. And uh, it's so fucking good. I just, every time I go back to it, it's just like an old friend. I love it. Uh, and I've been playing through Steam World Heist, uh, slowly grinding my way through that. It's pretty rad. It's like a tactical shooter, kind of 2D side scrolling tactical shooter. It's pretty awesome. Check it out if you've got access to it. I think SteamWorld games are on almost everything. I've played SteamWorld Dig 1 and 2. Uh, loved them both, especially 2. SteamWorld Dig 2 is fucking awesome. And uh, I'm really enjoying Heist. It's different from those two. Those two are more Metroidvania-y. Uh, but it's still really good. And I'm looking forward to trying uh, try SteamWorld Quest down the road too once it goes on sale. Because uh, I'm a cheap prick. But check out SteamWorld Heist if you haven't. I think it's still on sale right now on the Switch eShop and it's rad. Uh, so that's what I have been, or that's what I am playing. Let's talk about what, uh, I have been playing. Uh, that's a terrible segue, but this week we're talking the Simpsons Bart's nightmare. Uh, now just quickly, I don't remember exactly what I say in the actual podcast episode this week itself, but I refuse to fall 
down the hole of just talking about uh, what I think about the state of the show right now. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to say that it was great. I was a diehard fan through about 12 seasons, like most of us were, and that's good enough. Uh, I just choose to remember those seasons as the greatness that they are. Uh, they're all coming to Disney Plus apparently soon or whatever that Disney streaming thing is. And I said to one of my friends the other day, they're going to charge like 15 bucks to watch all 30 seasons of The Simpsons on the go, or they'll charge 20 bucks to just get the first 12. And I'll pay the 20. So, uh, But that's what I think of the show. We all know that the show might suck now, and we also all know that most of the games over the years have sucked. But we also all played them. Right. If you didn't own them, you knew someone that owned them. We've all anyone that grew up in the 90s played Simpsons video games of some kind. Right. Because there were so many of them. You know, I just quickly I was writing a list down of just all the ones I could think of playing over my life. And I was like, there's Bart versus the Spate Mutants. The boo is late at night. I'm tired. Bart versus the Space Mutants. There's Bart versus the world. There's Krusty's Fun House. There were Bart versus the Juggernauts on the Game Boy. There was uh, something like Escape from Death Camp. Or escape from some camp. Maybe it was Camp Krusty. I don't remember. Also on the Game Boy, I remember my friend Daniel and Sean had that one. Uh, there was Virtual Bart. There was Bart's Nightmare. There was the arcade game. There was, I think it was like Road Rage or something it was called. There was Simpsons Hit and Run, uh, which is the best Simpsons game, by the way. Uh, there may be an episode of coming on that, hint, hint. Uh, there was Simpsons Skateboarding. There was Simpsons Wrestling. They have done it all, and most of them suck. Uh, for my money, Simpsons Hit and Run is the best. And uh, the second best actually might be this one, uh, at least in my book. Uh, it's it's uh, Bart. I mean, I owned Bart versus the Space Mutants. Uh, I won't talk too much about that. I'll save that for what its own episode. But I liked it. Uh, I owned Bart's Nightmare growing up, my brother and I, and uh, and I couldn't finish it. But I played the shit out of this game as a kid. And I don't know if I think it's good because I played it a lot or if I think it's good because it's good. But I don't hate this game. Uh, I was not able to get an A on it. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to the episode. You'll find out more. That'd basically be like a perfect game. would be an A+. I could not do it. But uh, but I liked it. I played it over and over. I got pretty good at it as a kid. Um, I don't think it's the worst concept for a game. I just think the controls we're kind of broken on it at times, but, uh, I, you know what? It's, we're almost at 10 minutes. I still made it to 10 minutes of rambling. I'll shut the fuck up. I'll get to the episode and you guys can find out, uh, why I like and don't like Bart's nightmare. My guest this week is my fellow, uh, is a fellow comedian and a newcomer to the show. Uh, my pal, Darren Morris, he is from Calgary and just happened to be up here in Edmonton a few weeks ago, uh, to do some shows and was gracious enough to find his way up to, uh, my maison and come in and talk, uh, Simpsons with me. And uh, now you guys get to hear what we had to say about it. So I'm going to cue the music. And I'm going to get out of here quick because the music gets old really fast. Bart's Nightmare originally released in North America on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in September of 1992. The following year it came to the Sega Genesis. Almost everybody has played it and uh, most of everybody semi likes it. And I'll tell you why right now. Here we go, you guys. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work they can help you work through your issues learn to communicate better and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it i've talked to my therapist about my relationships especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much i was away from home and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationship strong even when i was out on the road uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Okay, 
Okay, we got another uh, another first timer to the podcast this time. He's uh, from the faraway town of Calgary, three miles down, or three miles, three hours down the road. Uh, talking a little Simpsons bar slimer with me. It's my buddy, fellow comic Darren Morris. How are you, my friend? I'm good, good. You? I'm great. I'm great. It's summer. Yeah, it's it's. It. I don't know where the fuck it came from because a month ago it was freezing here and now it's like a hundred degrees out. Yeah. I, and honestly, by the time this podcast gets up, it it could be winter again. I don't know when this <laughs> thing will go up. Uh, so this week we're going back to the Super Nintendo, which is the greatest console of all time. I don't care what you have to say. And we're talking about not one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, which, dude, I'm actually kind of excited for this because we don't do a lot of games that like, like so far ninety percent of the episodes have been about like great games. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And like. I'm like, I really want some people to come on and just talk about like average games, which is like at best is what we're talking about today. And that's uh, The Simpsons, Bart's Nightmare. So, uh, so you, you picked this one out when I say the list of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you own it growing up or Uh, what? I didn't own it, but I did uh, rent it from Roger's video like three or four times trying to beat it and it is impossible. Yeah, it is. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, that's like, I remember those. I used to do that with, did you ever play, uh, how old are you, Darren? I'm 32. Okay, we're almost the same age then. So you at NES at one point? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Did you ever play Bart versus the World? on the nes no never have no. I, that was that was my version of this because i owned bart's nightmare but when i was a little kid i would rent bart versus the world over and over and <laughs> over and never like i could play it now as an adult be like i was never beating this never yeah, in a million yeah. years was i gonna beat this but i just kept giving them my fucking money for some <laughs> weird reason so this was the first simpsons game i ever played and as a kid i kind of enjoyed it i liked the concept it was almost like you you know how like grand theft auto is like that open world thing and i kind of feel like that simpsons one was as much as it was going to be back then where you just have that side scrolling infinite yeah. street where you're trying to chase those papers. So it kind of was cool that it didn't have an end. Totally. Yeah. But it's it, different. Yeah. Yeah. Like now here's the thing is like, I will say like anyone listening to this, that is obvious. I mean, if you're listening to this, you're a retro gamer, at least to an extent, uh, the Simpsons do not have a great track record <laughs> as far as their video games go. Like I think the argument could be made that they didn't really get a game right. As far as a Simpsons video game, if you don't count the arcade game, because the arcade yeah, game was, was pretty rad. That's pretty good, yeah. If you don't count the arcade game, you can make an argument that it wasn't until Hit and Run on like the GameCube era that they finally got a Simpsons game decently correct, you know? Yeah, yeah, I could agree with that. Uh, having said that, I liked Bart vs. the Space Mutants on the NES. Uh, I liked Bart vs. the World, even though I couldn't beat it. And then uh, I owned Bart's Nightmare, and I really liked this game as a kid. And I don't know if that's because... Well, I'm going to explain that it's, it's not necessarily because it's good, but like when you're a kid, you, you play what your parents buy you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like what you get for Christmas or your birthday or whatever is that's your fucking game, right? Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. And this was one of those ones that like my mom knew I was a big Simpsons fan. So she bought me this game and I went from like, dude, this is awesome. to like, as I've gotten older, I'm like, this isn't that fucking good. <laughs> like, like, it's just, you just took a great character and a great franchise and put them into an awful video game. It does have its high points, though. Like like I said, it was like there was something about it I liked. I liked the whole concept of, like, you're trying to get these sheets of paper to, like, finish your school assignment and all that. And it was it was simple enough, right? Like, yeah. Like, the game just boots up. There's not a big beginning or anything. It's just, boom, you're in the street trying to find these sheets of paper and stuff. And it's kind of almost like just, like, a bunch of mini games with this, like, overall big thing you have to complete which yeah. i thought was a bit it was a bit different from other games i'd played at the time so uh, yep i'll give them that and like yeah. and i will say that about simpsons games like they like not that i know what you would just regularly do with them but they kind of think out of the they think outside of the box and they try to come up with original ways and i agree with you the concept of this game i can totally get on board with you know like i think it's uh so if, if you've never played it basically uh, Bart is like to me the most far fetched part of the story is that Bart is doing his homework <laughs> because yeah, like yeah. yeah so the game starts Bart's working on this like report or something and then he falls asleep and then after he falls asleep a fan blows all the papers of his report out the window and then he goes out after them and then that sets up the game and basically you're sleeping the whole game like it's all a big dream yeah yeah um and so like you like Darren said you start the game out you're on this like uh, which which to me is the worst part of the game. I fucking, it makes me so angry. I die there more than in any other level. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so the main, the, the main core of the game is uh, you're on a street, just like a street in Springfield, and just random shit is fucking everywhere. Like fucking everywhere. And you have a meter at the top of the screen full of Zs. It starts out with like five Zs. And, uh, and you can collect more as you go. And uh, every time you take damage, you lose a Z. Or every time, I think every time you go into a mini game and get hit and come out of the dream, you lose Zs too. 
I, I think it's like, yeah, so if you lose the mini game, it's one Z, but if you miss jumping one of those stupid little green things or oh, whatever, fuck. you lose a Z as well. And it's like, yeah, it, it was frustrating because I'd find myself dying more on the street than I would yeah. in the actual mini games. Yeah. yeah, and like, so yeah, so you just walk up and down the street and it's, and it is, like you said, almost open world-ish. You can go left to right as much as you want. doesn't matter which way. I mean, it's only left or right. Uh, and just random shit comes at you and there's tons of it. And basically what you're doing, we'll get into all the random shit in a second yeah, because yeah, yeah. the fucking Jebediah Springfield heads are <laughs> amongst the worst villains in video game history. <laughs> uh, basically what you do is you walk back and forth looking for a piece of paper and you'll find a piece of paper blown on the sidewalk and then you have to jump on it. And then once you jump on it, it'll take you to two random doors uh, that are different colored. And then those enter you into little kind of, like you said, mini games yeah, yeah, where yeah. you have to beat the mini games to get paper. Uh, fuck this sound. Like I it sound high, so ridiculous. right? Like yeah, you yeah. sound high explaining it, but basically you have to, yes, yeah, so you go into a mini game and then if you beat the mini game, you get a piece of paper from your report. And I think there's eight in total. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the more pieces of paper you get before you die, the higher score you get. That's the thing though. It's not, that's the, cra- I don't know if you knew this. It's crazy. It's like, you could get no sheets of paper, go into the same mini game over and over again, rack up a high score in that mini game, die, go back in. The grade you get's based on your score, not on the oh, amount of sheets of paper you got. I didn't know that. So like if I were to go and like do, let's say like the Bartman level, which I think is the easiest one. It is, yeah. I could do the Bartman level over and over again, die at the very end, accumulate this big score, and before you know it, you're at like a B for his oh, grade. Oh shit, yeah, I so, didn't know that. So I, I've had times where I've gotten like three, three, she, three of the eight sheets of paper and I still end up with like a C minus. And I've had times where I've gotten like one sheet of paper, but I have a high score and it's like a C plus or whatever. Oh fuck. It's crazy. All right, well, that's the, that's the episode. No, <laughs> that, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. It makes sense though. Um, so that's the basic concept of the game. And I guess like in theory to beat the game, there's one of two mentalities. You either need to get an A plus or you need to collect all eight sheets of paper, which I would assume pretty much locked down and because there were so many points, they would probably get you close to that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll get into the fucking five mini games in a minute. Uh That fucking overworld, that street (laughs) is just like now. And here's, and this is, this is the point I want to give Simpsons games is, uh, the, the originality and some of the ideas they come up with, I think they do deserve credit for. And I don't mean just this one. I mean like virtual Bart, Bart versus the space mutants, Bart versus the world, all those games. At least they come up with unique ideas. You know what I mean? And I do think they deserve some credit for that where they deserve a lot of non-credit is the controls are usually fucking broken or close. Yeah. Uh, the jumping in particular. How the fuck they figure out jumping in Simpsons games, I don't know. And so when you're on this main road, almost everything hurts you or affects you in some fucking way. Yes. There are mailboxes floating across the road. Every time you walk by one, they'll float across the road. And if you jump over it, sometimes you can pick up items and stuff out of it. Uh, there are the... oh. As Darren mentioned, <laughs> fucking Jebediah Springfield heads, just these green heads that just, just rotate. They just rotate and float through the fucking street and they're next to impossible to jump over. And they're never like in a sequence that are like easy to jump over all of them. It'll never. Like you could jump over like the first two and then the third one's immediately right behind it and you're going to get hit by that one. They're, like, it's oh, so, stupid. it's it like it, they're fucking straight out of like a Castlevania game with like the Medusa heads and shit that would fly at you. Yeah, That's yeah. what these Jebediah Springfield heads are. They're just fucking ridiculous. Uh, like what I was like, there's a, there's an old lady, a grandma, uh, she doesn't hurt you. She kisses you. She kisses you, which if you turn into a frog, which the Lisa fairy (laughs) can do to you, if she floats over you, she'll turn you into a frog. Then a kiss from the grandma will bring you back to life or make (laughs) you back into a human. Yeah. And you need to be a human because that's how you spit bubble gum that you can then control the bubble to pick up Z's to fill up your Z meter. Did you ever bother using the uh, watermelon seeds? No, no, no. You could spit watermelon seeds, but I never <laughs> fucking used them at all. Yeah. Uh, Principal Skinner was walking around, and if he touched you, he'd put you in a suit. But you can't get hurt when you're in the suit. You can't get hurt, but you but can't you do slow. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fucking stupid. <laughs> like it's it's uh, the the bullies will come along. Uh, Dolph, Dolph, uh, Jimbo, and yeah, Kirby, yeah, yeah. And uh, if they picked you up, then you would lose these as you were stuck with them. Um, but what you could do is, I think for that is as you're stuck with the bullies, there'd be like the saxophones going by. Yeah. And if you jump and hit the saxophone, then the Lisa fairy turns them into rats or yeah. something. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then Lisa would mute them. And say, what the fuck? This is- <laughs> like, just, it, it, we sound bait. Like, it sounds <laughs> so stupid. Uh, and so this is just some of a few of the many, many things that you're trying to avoid while you're looking for sheets of paper. <laughs> and like, and what frustrates me is probably my single biggest gripe 
about this game is that unless I'm doing something wrong, the sheets of paper are generated completely at random. Yes. And so sometimes you'll get one in like five seconds, like boom, and you're in. And other times you fucking walk for, it feels like 10 minutes and you just can't find a sheet of paper. That, that's probably the most frustrating thing I found was like, while yeah. I'm trying to get that next sheet of paper, I'm just disease in the meter. I'm, I'm getting hit by Jebediah Springfield, that that mutant fish, whatever. Blinky, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'd always end up dying before I find that next sheet of paper. Yes, yeah. and like sometimes, honestly, that's your whole game. Like, because it, like, literally, like Darren said, when the game starts, it drops you in the middle of the road. And like Bart wakes up, and then you start walking one way or the other, looking for sheets of paper. And like, I've had games where I've never found a sheet of paper. I've just lost all my Zs and fucking <laughs> died. And there's not, like, it's completely ran. And it's so stupid because the whole object of the game is to get out of that hub world and go into fucking the mini games yeah. to try to get your sheets of paper and they just don't show up sometimes. It's so frustrating. Like it's going to like when we, cause at the end of each podcast, I score the game out of 10 yeah. and it's losing three points right away just because of that fucking random sheets of paper <laughs> is so stupid. I hate it. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Okay. And then quickly before we get into the mini games, the other thing about the overworld is uh, you can collect more Z's to fill up your Z meter when blue Z's float through the screen. If yeah. you blow a bubble with your bubble gum, and touch them but there are also red z's that, that pop your bubble would you ever like take your bubble gum for a walk once you got that one blown you just be like totally just go for a, it's like you're walking this floating bubble gum trying to catch other blues yes and then the red ones will come by yeah but that was the other frustrating thing about it was like so to control the bubble you had to like hold i don't know why or something and then the d-pad you could control the bubble yeah I had no idea. Yeah, if you hold <laughs> one of the buttons, then with your air, with the directional pad, Bart doesn't move, but you can control the bubble, uh, which wow. is handy. But then Bart's not moving, so you're trying to collect these fucking Z's. But then those stupid Jebediah heads or something come along and hit you while you're trying to collect. And so half the time you end up losing a fucking Z. Did you ever? Uh, I didn't Fuck. find this out until I started playing it recently to try to prepare for the podcast here. But uh, did you ever see like what you could do with those like the fish eyes, the, the like the mutant fish? No. If you jump over three of the mutant fish, you get these like pillows at the top. And then if you get three pillows, it's almost like a continue. And then when you die, the bar refills. Oh, shit. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. So I found that out like just the other day. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, it's, so like, remember when you were a kid and you would fucking, this was like pre-internet. Uh, and you would talk about video games at school and people would like make up shit about what you could do. Oh, yeah. And you know time. what I mean? Yeah. And everyone, you kind of believed them, but you kind of didn't because you didn't know, right? Yeah, Nobody yeah. knew and we can look shit up. This game, there are so many <laughs> things you can do that sound fake that someone could tell you and you'd be like, nah, it's not fucking true. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but it is true. It's, it's, what a ridiculous game. So do you have any other thoughts or gripes about that fucking overworld? Uh, overworld? Uh, like... Oh, I don't know. It's just, I, I, I feel like perplexed because it is part of the game. I, I, I feel you hate the game a lot more than I do. Um, <laughs> I, 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 like, and that's what we'll get into. I love most of the mini games. Well, I just hate I, I that fucking that, overworld. I found the overworld was the thing that made it kind of like so much different from other games. Mm -hmm. Like you could have easily made this into like one of those almost like Mario World, Donkey Kong things where you're just kind of on a map and, oh, this is now this yeah. world. This is that level. This is that level. But the randomness of it was something I kind of enjoyed. I, like, I, I appreciate the concept. I just yeah. think it's flawed. And I the, think if they made the papers show up more regularly, uh, that would yes. have been a little bit more helpful. I also like the idea that you have a choice of which one of the mini games you go into right. when uh, those come up. I do too. So, But no, overall, the uh, I don't know. It was... As I'm playing it as an adult and I'm kind of discovering these other things about it, I'm like, maybe this game is achievable. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, as a as a kid, I got frustrated and the amount of times I rented it from Roger's video was crazy just because <laughs> of that. Fucking Roger's, Roger's video. video yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, it, to me, honestly, it's just the paper thing. The paper thing irritates. I, I have no problem with most of the rest of the overworld. I don't mind that it's hard. Um, it's just that fucking waiting it forever for a piece of paper. Like will get me to the point where I'm like, I don't want to play this anymore. Like give me a fucking piece of paper. Like that's what I'm here for. Um, okay. So then like, like Darren said, once you jump on a piece of paper, you fall into the paper. It's like from Bart's perspective, it's kind of yeah. cool. You fall onto the sheet of paper and then there's, uh, two doors and they're different colors and there's five different colors of doors. And there's, cause there's only five. Yeah. But there's still some you have to play through twice. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So there's, uh, so there's Bartman. Yeah. There's, uh, the bloodstream. Like the, uh, kind of, is almost like that dig dug thing. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. There's the temple of Maggie or whatever it's called. The Indiana yeah. Jones spoof. There's itchy and scratchy. Yeah. And then there's Godzilla or Bartzilla. 
but it's only five. Yeah. So Bardzilla. So okay. So we'll go through them all quick. So uh, so Bardzilla. Okay. I'll ask you right now before we get into it. Which one's your favorite? Well, I find three of them are a lot easier than the others. Yeah. Uh, the itchy and scratchy level is pretty easy. Uh, if you find those spots on the map that you can, or in that little setting room uh, where you can go with the hammer, it's like no one's going to get you. Mm-hmm. You can pretty much get that easily. So I feel like that's an automatic piece of paper if I want to do that one. And then the Bartman also is pretty easy when you yeah, just kind of know where to go. Yeah. And then uh, probably the one where you're like in the bloodstream or whatever. Yeah. Those would probably be the three I find the easiest to complete. I would say the one that I find the most fun of them is probably... I guess the itchy and scratchy one, just because it's, uh, I don't really have a reason for it. It's just the, <laughs> it's just the one I like right. most of them, yeah. I, uh, see, my favorite one is actually Bardzilla, because I can beat it, and I'm proud of that. I've never beaten that Yeah, one. I'm proud of that. So I almost got to like, tag team one of these. All right, this one's on you. <laughs> yeah, you can do this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll go through them all. So we'll start, we'll, we'll start with Bardzilla. So in the Bardzilla one, Bart is Bardzilla. He looks like Godzilla. He actually looks pretty rad. Like, and I will give this game credit for that. Yeah. Um, it looks great. It looks like a it's, Simpsons episode. It does. Yeah. Like it's like especially considering like how old it is now and the 16 bit like I'm a, I'm a diehard Super Nintendo guy who's always trumped it over the Sega, but I won't I won't I'll sit here and just admit it. Like Sega Genesis games to me on the whole look better. Like they're better at pulling off that cartoony yeah. um design, but this game looks like a cartoon. Like you said, it looks fucking great. Have you played it on the Sega as well or just I have, the, I uh, haven't. No. Okay. No, have you? I, I have it almost like I think I remember it being a little bit easier on the Sega, to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's just kind of like the jumping's better or whatever, but I always found it a little bit easier on the Sega Genesis. But it's one of those ones that are like the game's identical mm-hmm. between the two, whereas like you will play other games that are like like for Batman and Robin or whatever. The Sega Genesis version is a completely different game from the right. SNES version. But this one, they're pretty much identical. They just ported it to make yeah, more money. Yeah. yeah franchise that big get it on everything yeah, you yeah, can yeah. right and you gotta remember this is like during the heyday of the simpsons too when the simpsons was fucking good yeah like not yeah. just good it was legendarily good it oh, was yeah. so incredible i could we could talk simpsons for <laughs> fucking hours uh so yeah so you start out this one first one you're bardzilla you're like a godzilla spoof and you're walking through a city and fucking jets are flying by dropping bombs on you and tanks are coming up and shooting you and stuff and basically each of the he walks on his own but each of the uh, like YXPA attacks something different, and the key is to just be ready, like re- reflex wise, to kill things before they attack you, and you just have to walk long enough. And- I could never get pa- like I, I think you eventually get to a tower or something. You do, which, yeah, yeah. I've never gotten to the tower. I'm always like, oh, dead really? immediately on that one. Yeah. yeah, like so the key is to just be, and it's all just I mean just p- p- repetition, and you just learn like okay, so B will take out uh, tanks on the street with a fireball. Uh, a will shoot the monorail. X will shoot a laser forward to take care of jets. And you just have to, you know, practice and practice till you're quick enough to be like, oh, I hear the jets. So get ready to hit X. As soon as they come by, hit X and you'll kill them before they can shoot you and stuff. And you just have to keep them walking for a minute or two uh, without taking enough damage to kill them. And then you get a sheet of paper just like that. Oh, wow. Okay. And, then, and then it instantly drops you into the second part where they come by and they shoot Bart with like a, a beam to shrink him. So then he becomes like a small Bardzilla and then you have to climb a tower. And uh, some people hate it, but I love this part. And basically it almost becomes like Donkey Kong in a way. So it bar- like automatically uh, holds on to this tower and you just up left and right. And it starts out with like eight windows, like across horizontally. And people are coming out of the windows and dropping shit, trying to hit you in the head to knock you off the tower. And you just have to dodge them. But then after a while, it, sh- it shrinks to six windows across. Then it shrinks to four, then it shrinks to two. Okay, yeah, I you know. remember seeing my friends play this level yeah. when I was like younger, and I could never figure this one out. And at, yeah, so it's hard because as they shrink, there's less room to dodge shit that's falling on you, right? And then as you get glowing up higher and higher, uh, Marge is like a big moth, and she flies in, and if she hits you, she knocks you off. So then to avoid her, you have to grab pipes on the side of the building. But if you hold on to a pipe for too long, a UFO will come by and shoot you, and that'll kill you. <laughs> so you're just dodging everything. And this is one of the ones that you can complete. Yes. This is one of the yes. ones that you're able to This is to the do. one I'm best at, probably. <laughs> wow. And then by the time you get to the top, Homer's up there as Homer Kong, and he's trying to punch you. And you have to, like, you can hit A or something and Bart, like, I assume it's, like, leftover gamma ray shit that they shot him with. But he, like, flash, like Godzilla, like, um, like he lights up, like he's, like, radioactive or something and so the key is to get to the top of the tower avoid homer's punches and zap him and then he turns into regular homer and that's actually probably the funniest scene in the game like he turns into regular homer and he's holding on to this fucking antenna at the top of a building and then he looks up at the camera and then just goes dull and then falls and you hear the homer scream and then you get the second sheet of paper 
So, so that one has two sheets of paper yeah. and the Godzilla one. Yeah. Okay. And that's so that one's I like that one. Um and then you mentioned Ditsy and Scratchy, which is like it frustrated me because Bart slides around so much in that one and a little bit of the controls are weird. Oh no, the the the, the key to that one is like so you get your hammer or whatever and you have like itchy and scratchy and vacuums for some reason yeah, come and in. And I, I don't know what the random shit. vacuums. It's itchy and scratchy. Had anything. They could have had anything else come in. It could have been the dog or whatever. But yeah. So you have the so pretty much the key to that one is you don't run around. You just stay in one spot. Oh, and just so keep like slacking because that one does have some depth to like the room, right? So it does. Like, yeah. Uh, you can go like higher or lower, and the higher you are, you'll see like there's the uh, cabinet, not a cabinet, like a little side table. And if you just stand beside the side table and just. Uh, as the things come into the frame, you just slam it with the hammer. And the thing is, you could, the second you see them, you can hit the hammer and then change the direction and still hit them. Oh, on the I see. same one. So right. uh, once you're there, it's like, I, I can go through that level without getting hit once. And just spam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So once you get through that, and then you have like the little plunger gun thing, right? When you get yeah, in the attic. Yeah, that's right. And once you have that, you just kind of go back and forth. Like, it's kind of like just, I don't know, it's like a cheap approach to it, I guess. But yeah. you just stand in one spot, shoot to the left, shoot right, shoot left, shoot right, shoot left, shoot right. And then when you get to the kitchen for the last part, you just kind of, I, I would just kind of gradually crawl across the screen, continuing to shoot until you find that spot where uh, you hit them before they come into the frame and then you have oh, to shoot a paper. Okay. So perfect. Like the itchy and scratchy one, the, the trick is you don't move around. You just kind of stay in the one spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's always my first go-to one if I Because you, you know you can cakewalk through it. Yeah. Easy sheet of paper for that one. So yeah. So you just get dropped into itchy and scratchy land. Ba- or you get dropped into an episode of itchy and scratchy. And it looks great. Like it, it looks does, like yeah. an episode of itchy and scratchy. It's pretty rad. So. Yeah, yeah. And now I, I may be wrong. But I want to say you play. You can play through that one twice because there's two different sheets of paper, isn't there? I want to say you play it twice. I never had the chance to uh, do that uh, one a second time. I don't think. I uh, may- well, maybe you have to get the others. Yeah, before maybe you get that one opened up. But yeah, no, I've never. Uh, I've never found that one. So uh, I'm, I'm looking it up as we go because now it's going to bother me. So there's <laughs> that one. So there's one where you go into like a. It looks like you're basically in like a radioactive bloodstream, for lack of a better term. I don't know if that's exactly where you are. Yeah. I, I, I I always kind of thought it was like amiibo th- or like or like kind of uh, what's it the not amiibo that's a Nintendo thing uh, no, the, uh, <laughs> the amiibo like amiibo back, yeah, yeah 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 where you just kind of like these like, little bacteria things and you just have to blow them up with your like it kind of reminds you of like the Dig Dug game like from a long time ago where you would kind of put your little air gun into the monster and then inflate it until it pops right yeah and so and that one's actually I, I like that was the first one I could beat as a kid. Um, cause the only things in that game that can, so yeah, so you, you basically, you, it's like you said, like dig dug, you blow up these bacteria and the whole time, uh, as a reference to the first season of Simpsons, smiling Joe Fission, who I assume was originally going to be like the mascot for the power plant and mm-hmm. they, he showed up once and they kind of just did away with him, but he floats through the screen and he hello always gives you hello there yeah, yeah. and you have to keep collecting him and you just collect enough of him to break down the you shield. Is there a piece specific of paper. number? Is it like five or something? Or I'm not sure. I, I want to say five or six probably. Yeah. Um, and, but meanwhile, you're trying to blow up these bacteria just to keep them away from you. And there's like, there's kinds with spikes on their head. They don't actually hurt you. They just poke you and like deflate whatever you were. Yeah. And, uh, and just kind of like, you can't control Bart for a second, like when they hit you, but then there's other ones that come in and throw grenades at you. And they one hit will kill you. Yeah. And the grenades can be really hard to track because there's the screen is so fucking busy. Mm-hmm. So whenever I would play the one, like the priority is to get after the grenade guys, get rid of them, you know, cause yeah. they're the ones that can kill you and then just keep grabbing smile and Joe visions until it's. But, but, but so he speeds stupid. up. He speeds up, and then like you pretty much have to stay at the top of the screen. Yeah, to, like after the first or second one that you catch. Yeah, you pretty much have to stay at the top of the screen to keep it even. They give you even a chance of catching them. Yeah, because it yeah. does get hard. Yeah, uh, it go well, just fast. It gets going fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so then like you said, there's one where you're Bartman, uh, which like is the easiest one for sure. But I also think it's like in some ways it's like one of the fun. Like I enjoy it, you know. Um, it just, because it feels like a video game, like your it Bart, does. it's, it's a, it's Bart is flying through this. It's basically like, like any random flying from left to right, shoot em up game. It's yeah, just yeah, a Simpson yeah. style. And Bart's flying across the Springfield, uh, dressed as Bart man with his slingshot and he fights. And I also think that this is the coolest one cause it mentions the most, it has the most characters in it. It has quite a few references. Yeah. 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 And you just like, you fight like Sherry and Terry, Barney Gumbel's there for some reason, Smithers twice. Yeah. Smithers. And then eventually you fight Mr. Burns. Uh, and you just, oh yeah, and Apu keeps flying by We're to help you. Off the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 
And so that one's pretty easy. Like you said, it's so hard to die in that one. You just have to not completely suck at video games and you can fly through that one and shoot Oh, yeah, because you can get like a ton of points on that one too. And it's just yeah. like... Yeah, and I think you can collect Zs on that one. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. like, a, if I think in one of the like the crusty balloons, mm-hmm. uh, there's like one... Or I don't know if it collects Zs. I think it like makes your Z meter... It can make your Z meter like larger. Yeah. So it's easier to collect Zs that's right. when you're in the other thing, I think. I right. I think that's what it... But no, that one's a pretty easy one. It is easy. And then finally, there is, for my money, the hardest one. And it's Indiana Bart or whatever the fuck it is. I've not... I've gotten... Because... Or maybe I'll let you talk you uh, get started on this it, one. It's, it's So like basically, your Bart is Indiana Jones. And you're in the... They call it the Temple of Maggie. And you're... It's like a... It's like a... It's a... You're going from left to right, but there's a little bit of depth. You can go up and down as well. And you're on a grid of bricks. And I think it's like four high. Three or four high. Um... Three, I think. And yeah, yeah. yeah, and you're trying to avoid the devil who keeps showing up and he's trying to hurt you, these little like Satan guys. Plus Maggie spits bullets at you and shit. And there's no way to avoid the Maggie bullet. Like, uh, the it's, second it's the second it's shot out, you're pretty much dead so, immediately. Okay, so just so you know, I because I remember that how I used to beat as a kid is is hang out at the bottom of the screen when you come over and you're far enough back that if you just take it slow, she'll spit, but you're not far enough forward for it to hit you because it goes at such a forward angle. Oh really? Yeah. So that's how we used to get by. I was hanging out at the bottom of the screen. Between the two of us, we could beat this game. We could probably beat game. this game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then in addition to all the things that'll hurt you, uh, the the uh, the rock platforms you're on are at various heights. Yes. And if they're the bottom height, then they are they get a little fire on them. And if you jump on one of those, then you die. You drop through the bottom. Right. And so every time you jump on one, it goes down. Other ones come up. And so you're trying to avoid all this shit that's going on and not jump onto a bottom level one to die. Aside from the bullets that Maggie shoots, uh, the thing I found really frustrating because... For some reason, I could not control which way I use Indiana Jones's whip for the devil. Right. Until I realized it's the direct, it's like, like that Y button's like up. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of like. The four buttons are like a separate are the direction that you. So stupid. Yeah, not, not the way you're facing. It's no. just like, yeah, it's. It's very, it's just. <sighs> I've never beaten that one though. Yeah. It's, and there's two sheets in that one as well. You have to get through it twice. This explains why I only ever get three. Dude, it's fucking. <laughs> Oh man, like it's, I'm so like eternally torn right now because part of me's like, dude, this game's so fun. And the other part of me's like, I fucking hate this game. So that's the five mini worlds. And then I just looked it up. So you have to beat through, you have to get through Temple of Maggie twice. You do have to go through Itchy and Scratchy twice. Okay. There's two in Godzilla, but you can get them on one run. And then the one in the Bloodstream and the one in Bartman. And that's so the eight sheets. Does the second Itchy and Scratchy one come up after you've completed others, or is it? It's it what it looks like. Again. Oh, yeah, yeah, it shows up again at random. And that's the other thing is like, so whenever you fall into the pieces of paper, the, the randomly you get two, and then you've got about two seconds to pick which one because you, you get to know the door colors very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like what color is behind which one, or uh, which which because they're all each each level is behind a different color door. So you get dropped in. It'll randomly pick two colors, and you've got about two seconds to decide which one you want to go into. Does it automatically? Which which side is attorney if you just don't pick? I don't remember. Uh, I'm gonna have to look into this. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. now. I kind of want to go play it now. But <laughs> um, so that's that's it. And you basically just keep going till you either get all the paper or you run out of Z's. Yep. And that's... then that's the end of the fucking game. And then you start over again. Yeah. It, the, the the thing I do give it is like it's very easy and quick to start over. It's like yep. the second you lose, all of a sudden you're falling from the sky again, and then you're back there. But oh, sorry. This is the other thing I was gonna mention is like. The family, like the, like, you know, when you lose and it gives you like the grade of what you got on your paper. Yeah. Okay. So depending on what grade you got, Bart is a varying level of happy. Yeah. Like if he gets a C, Bart's like, yeah, I nailed this. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's almost like, Hey, I sort of beat the game. Cause Bart's happy with his, mar- Bart got a passing mark on his paper. And like, yeah. let's be honest. Is Bart ever going to get an A no. on a paper? No. So if yeah. he does, they're going to accuse him of cheating. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and that's the end of the game too. Is like there's no big screen or anything. Once you run out of Z's or get all the papers, you wake up, and then it's just they show the score you got on your paper, and then it's hanging on the fridge, and the rest of the Simpsons family is gathered around Bart, and they have slightly different facial Lisa's expressions. Lisa's always upset. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fuck Lisa. <laughs> As a diehard, I fucking hate Lisa. Um. So that's that's the game. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's uh, it, it like. It's it's classic vintage video games where like if you were good at this game, I would bet you could probably beat it in about half an hour. Well, it kind of reminds me of like those old like uh, like the games I'd be on an arcade. 
Yeah. Where it, like it kind of it seems like one of those arcade style games. Yeah, it does. But it never was. I don't to the best of my knowledge, I don't think it ever was no, an arcade. It was just one. console game. But it's just kind of one of those ones that are made to eat your quarters and you yeah. just lose and die and Yeah, and just go through again and again and again yeah. and again. Uh so just uh because I was gonna ask you to score it in a second. I'm on the Wikipedia page for the game right now because I wanted to look up the paper thing. <laughs> and so uh under reception they have two game scores for it. And this shows you how this game is like so torn like it splits crowds because like one publication gave it a score of thirty five percent, but then the other one gave it ninety one percent. What are the two? Uh, is it like I've never heard of either one, Mega and Superplay. I've, I've never heard of either one. Those, no, yeah. but like yeah, so like that's just it. It like some people love it, some people hate it. If I didn't have nostalgia for this game, I'd have no time for this fucking game at all. Oh well, when but, I first uh, got my uh, SNES fixed up with all the others and stuff, this is one of the first games I play it again because i just have all those memories of yeah. as a kid yeah and uh it's definitely different when you when you try it again as an adult versus a child yeah because it's uh you can kind of almost like use the logic of like gaming and stuff to kind of realize it may not be as hard as like if you can get those three fish yeah and get the continue all of a sudden it's like not as like if you're if you're kind of in that outer world or that main what what do you call it the uh, like the hub the hub world yeah. yeah so like if you if you kind of like are in there with a purpose um, I think it could be a little bit easier yeah but I think it's if you're just kind of like a child going in there blind it's going to be very difficult yeah totally it is but it's I don't know I mean it's fucking it's it's Simpsons games it's like from the from the 16 bit back the era back like the NES the SNES the Sega like this is what like. That's what Simpsons games were. They were fucking hard. Yeah. Partially by design, partially by poor controls. Um, but they were all original and there was something about them. Like Simpsons was so big back in the day that it just, I kept playing them because it was Simpsons. You know what I mean? Like well, I found back then often the games that were like tied to like the, the licensed games, like whether it be the Disney games mm-hmm. or Simpsons or whatever, they seem to almost be, I'd say for the most part, more consistent than like, random other games in a way right i don't know if you found that i, I always found those ones that were like like the disney ones or the simpsons or like animaniacs or what they're always kind of like at least a minimum level of decency i i would uh, sometimes because there are some bad fucking licensed games like i mean yeah. particularly on the, like when i think of that first off i think of the nes and i think of like ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on I the NES. For the Atari, yeah. They were fucking awful. <laughs> okay, that's true. The, yeah, the Back yeah. to the Future game sucked. Like, that. Like, fucking, there was a lot of bad ones. But, like, you're right. And I feel like, especially when they got to the 16-bit, they at least tried to do something with these. Uh, with uh, I mean, The Simpsons were great. Animaniacs was fun. I mean, who doesn't love, like, when you think of the Disney games, particularly on the Sega, but they were good on the Super Nintendo 2, like Lion King and Aladdin and those. Yeah, yeah. Like, they looked phenomenal, right? I mean, when you think of the NES, I guess some of them like DuckTales and Chippendale and stuff. Darkwing Duck. Darkwing yeah, Duck. Yeah, yeah. They were fucking great. It was very, it was hit and miss, but like when they tried, they tried. The Simpsons games, if this game was the exact same game, but no Simpsons, just say it was fucking Frank's dream and it was just some kid, you'd be like, this game sucks. But when they throw the Simpsons aspects in, at least it makes it entertaining. If you they know? ever made like, they never will, but if they ever made like one of those like remastered anthologies of Simpsons games, would you play it? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I, I played them all growing up. So yeah, I just yeah. have like a soft spot for them, but none of them are, are great. Um, okay. Before we score this thing, have you got any other thoughts on Bart's Nightmare? We, yeah. Uh, you got it all out of your system. I think I, I think the biggest thing that kind of blew my mind on it was like there was no correlation between your grade and the amount of uh, papers you got. That's uh, fucked. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's you give fucked. that a try. Just yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go spam a fucking level and get an A <laughs> just to finally get a fucking A plus. See if the family's finally proud of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, then uh, that's it, Darren. On a scale of one to ten. What would you give oh, The Simpsons honestly, Bart's probably, Nightmare? I, I did enjoy this game growing up quite a bit. Like I said, Roger's video so often picked it up. Uh, I'd probably give it like a seven, seven and a half ish. Right. Like I, I actually like this game. It's uh, I really like the concept. I like the kind of open world, the best you can get with like an SNES game. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think yeah, I, I'd probably give it about a seven and a half out of ten. All right. You yeah, know. I'll go. I'll go six and a half because I swore I would take three points off of the paper, and I'll stand <laughs> by that because it fucking drives me crazy. But I will admit. 
uh, like you said, when I got a hold of my SNES Classic and got under, under the hood and started tinkering, this yeah. was one of the ones that right away I was like, I have to add it. You know what I mean? So that's worth something. I was so excited to get it on my SNES. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that said, I haven't played it yet, but that's <laughs> just because I, I don't want to go looking for paper forever. <laughs> So, uh, man, we got to do more Simpsons episodes. This was good. Um, dude, thank you so much for coming over, talking Simpsons oh, with I me. I appreciate it. Thank um, you. And uh, I'm going to, I'll hit pause so we can get on with our lives. All right. Good job. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Darren, thank you so much for coming up and talking Simpsons Bart's Nightmare with me. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for listening, downloading, subscribing, worshiping, idolizing the show, whatever it is you do. Uh, without you guys, I'd still be doing it. It just wouldn't be nearly as fun. Uh, if you guys are on social media, give us a follow. We're on Facebook.com slash Remember the Game. We are on Twitter and Instagram at Member the Game. Uh, just like Remember with LDRE at the front. And we are on YouTube now at YouTube.com slash Remember the Game. I promise there is some stuff coming to that channel outside of old episodes of the podcast very, very soon. Uh, if you liked the show, please leave us a good review anywhere you could, social media, uh, iTunes, wherever the fuck it is, you leave your reviews, I don't know what it accomplishes, but I know that I have been asked to, or been told that that's something I should be asking for, and uh, that's good enough, 47 episodes before we suffer through a game of The Simpsons. Uh, I'll be back next week with another episode of this show, it will not be a Simpsons episode, but it will be a good episode. Uh, in the meantime, go play some video games, uh, go enjoy Resident Evil 4 Switch Owners because it's there and it's fucking awesome, and I'll check in with you guys again in a week. Take it easy. <laughs>